Ah, uh, the pachycephalosaurids. Difficult to pronounce, even more difficult to spell when you're writing out bloody scripts, and also a group with an insanely diverse number of skull shapes, which might all just be the same species. Now, Pachycephalosaurus is a famous dinosaur for good reason, with a really iconic and strange appearance, as well as a name that literally translates to thick-headed lizard. Discovery of remains go back as far as the 1850s from various formations throughout the Midwest of the USA, but classification was all over the place. Generally speaking, most of the remains were assigned to Tylosteus, but that name had fallen out of favour and was considered redundant by the mid-20th century. So the material was then reassigned to what Barnum Brown and Eric Maron Schleicher named in 1943 Pachycephalosaurus, with two species being P. Granger and P. Reinheimerae. These were yet again reassigned though to a single species that was a re-evaluation of Truodon wyomingensis, naming today's only valid species Pachycephalosaurus wyomingensis. Whew. So why the hell is this such a confusing dinosaur? Well, when we look at the body alone, we see that superficially it wasn't that special. This was a bipedal ornithischian, with small front limbs that had five digits and is estimated to have been around 4.5 meters or 14.8 feet long, making it the largest pachycephalosaurid, which is also a hint to another reason that this dinosaur is so confusing, so stick around for that. But all this information has only been inferred from other relatives since only the skull of Pachycephalosaurus itself has been found so far. And speaking of the skull, it is this thing that makes this guy truly special. The skull sat on top of the neck in a strange way for a dinosaur, connecting to the bottom of the skull rather than the back, serving as support and evidence for the head back behavior, since looking down would mean a stronger, more straight stack of vertebrae to take those impacts. Now this skull was relatively short and stout, complete with a beaked muzzle and small leaf-shaped teeth. Now we've traditionally thought of this dinosaur as a herbivore, but these teeth have been perplexing. The teeth are actually too small to crunch through much of the tough and fibrous plants that other dinosaurs were well equipped for, meaning it likely strips some smaller, more delicate plants. This would have really restricted its diet though, and this is by no means a small animal. Well, it may have solved the problem by swinging both ways. The most complete jaw of a Pachycephalosaurus was found back in 2019 that actually showed it had sharp theropod-like teeth at the front of that beak. So yeah, this dinosaur was an omnivore. Now it was by no means a specialist hunter, likely just munching down on small or possibly even scavenged remains. What is also unclear is whether or not these meat-eating teeth stayed around forever. Eating plants is really not as easy as it looks, especially on the teeth and gut. Many juvenile herbivores have omnivorous diets until they're fully grown and capable of dealing with such tough plants, supplementing their diets with the meat of small, easy to catch animals. So Pachycephalosaurus might have done the same, especially since the specimen was a juvenile. Now because of the age, many people might not consider this to be a Pachycephalosaurus, but again, I will get into that. Adorning this strange head was an iconic crown, which consisted of a large 10 inch thick dome and small bony knobs and spikes surrounding it, leading all the way down to the snout. Now normally with these paleo profiles, I like to go through the actual environment that the animal lived in, but I've actually been through this environment in extensive detail in my Hell Creek video, so you can go check that out after you're done here, and for now I'll just stick to the animal. Now there are two main points of contention with Pachycephalosaurus. The first of which, did it actually headbutt anything? Ryan, you're absolute male. What the hell are you talking about? Look at this thing. Of course it headbutt stuff all the time. It was having the time of its life headbutting things all day more than Zinedine Zidane. Well, some have doubted this idea. The biggest argument against this is that that head dome is not as strong as it looks. Structural analyses were performed on the skull and they found that the direct impact levels that a Pachycephalosaurus could likely achieve would have actually caused some pretty serious damage to that dome damage which hadn't actually been found in any of the specimens up until this point. But in 2012, paleontologists studied the cranial pathologies a little closer on some new specimens and did in fact find healed over lesions that was put down to intraspecific combat, of which were consistent with something known as osteomyelitis. Osteomyelitis is a type of bone infection caused usually by some form of trauma, 
off an impact. One specimen of Pachycephalosaurus actually showed 23 lesions on its skull, showing this was a pretty seasoned fighter. Not only this, but Pachycephalosaurus also evolved these domes to have a unique type of fibrolamular bone, which basically means it had an unusually large number of fibroblasts, a cell that plays a critical role in healing wounds, especially on bones. So these guys were even prepared for a few scrapes and bruises along the way. Don't worry Zidane, this can now be your favourite dinosaur once again. Okay, that is just my entire bank of football references completely spent now. Does David Beckham even still play? But the jury is out on what kind of headbutting they were doing. Yes, there are categories of headbutts. One well-supported suggestion is that Pachycephalosaurus did not ram into things straight on, but instead aimed for glancing blows and flank butting, which would minimise those lesions and give more of a chance for performing threat displays. Either way, they use their heads. And then we come to the biggest controversy, ontogeny. An ontogeny is something I've already touched on in my Triceratops video, but ontogeny is essentially all of the changes that an animal goes through whilst it develops to a fully adult stage. The reason this caused controversy is thanks to two other proposed genera of pachycephalosaurs named Draco Rex Hogswartia and Stigimulux spinifer. Now these two dinosaurs have been found in the same formations as Pachycephalosaurus and only seem to be different in their size and head ornamentation. With Draco Rex being the smallest with head spikes and no dome, Stigimulux being the mid-sized one with relatively larger head spikes but a smaller dome and Pachycephalosaurus being the largest with the most prominent head dome. Do you see where I'm going with this? Well, there was a lot of back and forth over the years as to whether we should really consider these separate animals. But now it's generally agreed upon that Dracorex and Stegomoloch are redundant genera and are in fact juvenile or maybe even female Pachycephalosauruses. Now some still make the argument that Stegomoloch should be considered as Pachycephalosaurus but is in fact its own species within that genus naming it Pachycephalosaurus spinifer, but debates are still being had. Baby fossils were even found in 2016 that seems to further support this school of thought, having identical skull knobs to all three genera. And if you ask me, well I usually come back to the same argument for these kind of debates. It is really not often that you see such similar animals in size and morphology existing in the same environment at the same time since there are only limited niches within a given ecosystem. So I do think it's a lot more likely that we're looking at the various growth stages of the same animal. As always though, my favourite part is reading your thoughts down below, so be sure to leave your comments and thoughts. Please also consider leaving a like and a subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys next time.